Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Hangar at Marion Local High School, where tonight on WOSN we'll bring you a non-conference matchup between the visiting St. Mary's Rough Riders and the homestanding Flyers. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Mark Schein, and we'll bring you all the action tonight, Mark, and probably one of the only times this season you'll see a battle of bigs down low like this one between Austin Parks and, J and uh, Jack Kanapke for Marion Local. Two of the bigger players in the area and two of the better players in the area. Well, uh, Garrett, I cannot imagine one of the game all year with more size on the court, more height on the floor than we will tonight. Obviously, you mentioned Kanapke. He goes 6'9". His teammate Austin Niekamp goes 6'8". Then you look over at St. Mary's. Parks is at 6'10". At You've got Anxman who's at 6'6". You've got Jace Turner at 6'7". The guards for both teams have good size, so there's going to be a lot of size on the court this evening, and rebounding, taking care of the basketball, and, and scoring in the interior is going to be important for this game. And, we're, we're, and you're right. We're going to see defense. We're going to see rebounding. We're going to see fundamental basketball from two very good basketball coaches. Well, what we might see is a game where you have to have the ball about 12 times each quarter. You know, if you look at the way this game has gone the last four years, you don't score 45, 50 points and, and, and win the basketball game. It's a low-scoring game. It'll be a possession-by-possession possession game. If you can get a steal, get out, get a basket in transition, that helps your team so much. If you can get an offensive rebound and score, that helps your team so much because it's going to be a low-scoring, fundamentally sound game. Taking a look quickly at the starting lineups. First for St. Mary's, Cobain, Owens, Braden Sullivan, Jace Turner, Evan Angstman, and the Ohio State commit Austin Parks inside to center Turkle ready to tip off. And for Marion Local, Jaden Mesher, Tate Hess, Brandon Ike, Austin Niekamp, and Jack Kanapke is Kanapke in the center circle to tip. And it's won by St. Mary's and the Rough Riders. Get to Parks between the circles to begin the set. Angstman for three right from the get-go. Off the mark, Parks the offensive rebound, something he does so well. Missed a check out. Cobain Owens in the corner to Parks, trying to lob in the post to Turner. Back to the basket in the lane. Off the mark, and a rebound finally comes down to Jaden Mesher. Got the ball down in deep, right where they wanted it to go, and just couldn't finish with the left hand. Flyers working around the perimeter. They get it to knee camp in the corner. It's Mesher, excuse me, Hess. Top of the key, out of the elbow, back to the basket. Great cut, but the shot is blocked by Austin Parks. With two hands. I think the word is emphatic. Emphatically blocked. As Owens stands inside the center circle and gets to Parks straight away. Sullivan on the right wing. A little more than a minute gone by here in this opening quarter on the Charles River School Board. Great defense by Marion Local. Tipping that basketball back out. Owens to Parks once more. First team All-Western Buckeye League performer. Lost the handle on it. And it's a breakout for the Flyers. Outlet pass to Hess off the window. Can't finish. Offensive rebound blocked. And a foul committed by the Rough Riders, the first for either squad tonight. Well, that's what they would like to have because the defense is going to be so good in the half court. If you can get a steal like that, and get out in transition. Now, unfortunately, he missed the, the layup, but offensive rebound, now a couple of free throws. As Braden Sullivan steps to the line, the first free throw, too strong. Sullivan, 33% free throw shooter coming into tonight. Or excuse me, this is Jaden Mesher at the free throw line. I was looking at my wrong number 11. There's a lot of blue and yellow in here tonight, Mark. <laughs> that would be true. Mesher hits the second. Of course, the Marion Local Flyers in the home whites. Get your Rough Riders in the Blues. That's Austin Parks. Hands off to Sullivan. Flyers working across the timeline. Cobain Owens dribbling to this right wing. Sees a spot. Cross court pass to Anksman for three. Yes, sir. Anksman scored 30 against New Bremen earlier this week. That was a really good find. Cross court jump shot in the corner. Well, a good assist at that time on the penetration dribble kick out. Kanapke working on Parks. Gets to the hoop and in. That's a good sign for Marion Local to be able to take the ball down inside to challenge Parks, who didn't want to come up with a foul in this situation so early in the game. Not saying he let him go, but he didn't challenge him as hard as perhaps he could have. All knotted up at three as Cobain Owens goes straight to the window. Parks slaps it to the floor, but the loose ball goes to the Flyers. They'll run the floor a little bit. It's Mesher has the basketball at the top of the key. Ike to Hess, deep three for Hess. No, rebound lands in the lap of Parks. 
Flyers have only made eight three-point field goals through their first two basketball games. So that has not been a strength yet for a team that you know, just was playing football just a few weeks ago. It takes a little time to get that shooting touch. As we approach the Christmas break, only two games under the belt for Marion Local as Parks thought about the three from straight away. Gives to Owens. Parks sets the screen. Owens to the block. Turn around. Tried to lean. Instead was stripped. And lands in the hands of the Flyers. Really solid defense in the interior. Couldn't get a shot up. Then it was knocked out of his hands for the turnover. Hess in a corner. Straight away for Mesher for three. No. Rebound lands in the hands of Cobain Owens. Still not an up at three apiece on the Charles River scoreboard. Coach Hagemeyer calling a set. We can hear all the way up here at the top. Let's see what this play ends up being. Sullivan in the near corner. Anksman for three again. And another three for Anksman. Wow. The 6'6 junior has all six of the points on the scoreboard for St. Mary's. Same thing, just opposite corner, penetration dribble, kick out across the lane for the basket. I think the shot, no. And the Rough Riders will walk it back near the midcourt stripe. So we approach four minutes to go in this first quarter. Parks, the lob, lays it off the window. Slipped the screen that time and just went right to the goal, was able to score rather easily off another good pass. Hess will give to Mesher at the top of the key. Hess once more, puts it on the deck. Jump stops in the high post, step back jumper, no. Parks the rebound. Got in the lane, good shot under pressure, just wasn't able to convert. 8-3 to score. Rough Riders get it to Park once more. Working, finds a wide open Cobain Owens on the back door. Really good presence of mind, he saw the double team coming. Teammate open on the backside box, and he passed it to him for the easy basket. Really good pass. And, and one of those things that Parks does well is pass, just because you, you've got to get used to that. You're going to get double teamed so many times. You've got to find the open guy if you're going to be successful on the offensive end. Three minutes to go in this opening quarter. Mesher for three. Bang! Well, he has eight of their nine three-point field goals on the season now that he made that one. The first bucket in a long time for Marion Local. That's your average is 11 and a half a game. Sullivan works to the left. Throws to Parks between the circles. Parks puts it on the deck. Left elbow. Picks it up. Cutting Sullivan. Blocked out of bounds. We get a foul, I think. And the foul's going to go against Austin Niekamp. Yeah, I think we got an, a body foul, I believe. And so Sullivan will shoot, too. Well, they'll give it to Jack Kadapi. Yep, his signal was actually to hit him across the arm. A couple of free throws here. First one's up and good for okay. Sullivan. We mentioned our crew this evening, Scott Nurse, Tony Schwederman. Jason, or Jacob Botak was supposed to be here today. He turned up ill, so Jeff Klaus, a very that's a really good official to bring in if he yes, that, <laughs> happened to be free this evening. And, We'll be the third man in the crew. So we've got good officials here tonight. Yes, we Although do. some on the home side might argue that here after that call. Nonetheless, Flyers with the basketball. They get it to Mesher. Really good job of deep jumping on the passing lane by Owens. Here he did it again. They're switching that down screen. Kyle Lundgren in the ball game for Marion Local when he travels with it. First Flyer turnover. 12-6 so to score. St. Mary's the lead. And the basketball after the turnover. So Rough Riders work the basketball. Sullivan working on Mesher. Throws left to Cobain Owens. Parks on Ungren. Turnaround jumper off the mark. And Mesher the board. Not sure you could defend that any better than what he did. Hand straight up, made him take a fall away jump shot. Flyers. Knee camp thought about the jumper instead. They'll be patient with the basketball with 140 to go on the Charles River scoreboard. Very local average is 45 a game. They give up 32. St. Mary's average is 64.8. They give 49.6. Hess in the lane working against Turner. Jump shot, no. Ball's loose. 
Still loose. Scooped up by the Flyers. Mesher for three. No, and the offensive rebound. Ball still loose. Lands in the hands of Niekamp. Dribbled it off his foot. Kurt Guttemore happy with the offensive rebounds. Not happy with the no points resulting. Anksman lost a handle on it. Well, Coach Guttermiller said in his pregame stuff he didn't want to get out hustled, and he's not getting out hustled right now. Backdoor pass and a miscommunication there for Marion Local. And their third turnover here in this opening quarter. Comes Kanapke back in the game, got a little break. He's going to give Austin Niekamp a break. Aiden Eifert going to step in the ball game for Marion Local as well. So 43.8 seconds remain in the opening quarter. St. Mary's doubling up Marion Local, 12 to 6. As Cobain Owens will slowly walk the ball up the floor, working against Luke Pullman. Gets to Parks, back to the basket, oh. turns. Parks lost the handle. He made a really nice move with his feet he to did. get around him, but then he couldn't control his own dribble. His initial move to get open, that was a good one. You see that rim just standing there, you're six foot eleven. Eyes light up and <laughs> yeah. unfortunately lost the lost the basketball out of bounds. So Marion Local makes a couple more changes as Mesher steps back in the lineup. See if Coach Guttermiller with 30 seconds to go here decides to play last shot of the quarter. Flyers trail by six with 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Hess. Angles to this near sideline. Gives to Pullman. And Hess will stand at the high left point and hold the basketball for a moment. High ball screen from Kanapke. Hess now working against Parks. Blocked from behind. Five seconds to go in the quarter. Anksman in the lane. Gives up to Turner. His first shot of the game. Hits every bit of the rim and drops. And we've played one quarter of basketball. St. Mary's. Leads Marion Local 14 to 6 on the Charles River scoreboard here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. 14 to 6 on the Charles River scoreboard, and really, uh, frankly, Mark, maybe a bit of a sloppy first quarter there from a ball handling aspect. Yeah, five turnovers for St. Mary's, three for Mary Local, but the uh, Rough Riders shot it really well. Three of six from inside the arc, two of three from outside, made both of their free throws. Mary Local struggled. One for seven from the two point range. They are one for four from three, and one for two from the free throw line. Flyers missed a three from Tate Hess. Parks tipped it back out to a flyer, however. But that is their fourth offensive rebound. That's a good sign for Coach Guttermiller's team. Hess patiently surveys that St. Mary's defense. Kanapke works against Parks, tries to create some space, can't hit the shot. Rebound to Turner. Good defensive position by Austin Parks that time. Forced a left-handed shot that was off balance. Ball stolen away by Jaden Mesher. It's a two-on-one for the Flyers. He'll scoop up to the window, can't get it to go. And the rebound comes down to Turner. Three on three, back the other way. Sullivan in the high post, hands to Owens. Turner thought about the three. His pass poked away by Mesher. A nice job when Mesher is back to the basket. Just eyes in the back of his head, getting his hand in the way. Get your hand out in that passing lane and flip it out of bounds. Cobain Owens will take a seat for St. Mary's as Jaden Lotz comes into the ball game. Kyle Ungren in for Austin Niekamp as well. Good piece of coaching from Coach Hagemeyer. Owens turned it over the last possession. He's got a sub in and just talked to him, patted him on the head, said you'll get him the next time. Hanksman gets the inbounds to Turner. Parks in a short corner, back to the basket. Working on Kanapke, lays it up and in. Not sure Coach Gunnamiller is going to want him to take two dribbles across the lane from Left block to the right side to be able to go up. I think he wants more help down inside. Ungren with the basketball to Mesher straight away. Flyers nearly turn it over once more as Parks tried to strip Kanapke. 
Kanapke flashes across the post. They switched that down screen at the top of the circle. Lotz is doing it now. Yep, he played his man that time. And hence the move to the goal. Straight to the window for Brandon Eich. Miscommunication defensively. They've been switching that screen on the top of the circle. That time they did not. So he's able to catch and go to the goal. 16-8. St. Mary's the lead to basketball on the Charles River scoreboard. Sullivan trying to get that entry pass to Parks. Instead, will work to the top of the key to Watts. Tightly guarded. Ball is loose. Still loose. And finally scooped up by St. Mary's. And Dan Hegemeyer called timeout. So we'll step aside as well. 5.45 to go here in this second quarter. 16 to 8 the score. St. Mary's leads on WOSN. Rough Rider basketball out of the timeout. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Mark Shine here in this non-conference matchup between St. Mary's and Marion Local. And a uh, heads-up call there from Dan Hagemeyer. He's got a little bit of experience coaching okay. this game and called the timeout when the basketball finally landed in the hands of one of his guys in blue. Yeah, everything was just discombobulated. He wanted to get things set up that time, so he took his timeout when his team did secure the basketball. So Anksman looks to inbound. He's 6'6", junior. Gets it right back from Parks. Baseline, double team. Held ball, and really nice ball. Nice defensive help that time to step down when he tried to spin dribble. And the possession arrow points towards the Riders. There's a triangle out there, Garrett. If you look at the elbow from the free throw line right to the corner, if the ball is inside that triangle, the ball gets taken out on the baseline. That was the call right there. And I've learned something today. Travel. Aspen yep. lost his footing with the basketball. And now Marion Local will take the opportunity to make a substitution as Austin Kanapke steps back in the game. Is that a trapezoid? If you go from elbow to corner and elbow to corner, does that make a trapezoid? Um, I'm a social studies U boat I, I commander. Was I don't, I don't if, know anything about math. If I, I knew, <laughs> if I knew that, I'd probably do something more important with my life than this. Uh, that's a good question. I'm going to be laying in bed tonight trying to think of that as Kanapke nice gets the pass Whoa. and off the window. It's a nice play by Jack Kanapke on the bullet pass and turn and laying in. Yeah, he sealed off really, really well, but the pass was high and right on time. He was able to score before Parks could defend it. Cobain Owens gets a high ball screen from Parks to this near corner. Stops to Parks. Hands right back off to Owens. Eyed that rim for just a moment. We'll put it on the deck. Double teamed on the baseline. Nice pass to Lotz as Parks gets straight away. Line back out to Lotz at the high left point. Rough Riders will reset. Leading 16-10, ball poked out of bounds. Stay with the boys in blue. St. Mary's has turned the ball over seven times here in the first part of the basketball game, a little over 11 minutes. Just three turnovers for Marion Local. That's good pressure defense by the team wearing white jerseys. Anxman looks to throw it in. Gets in the backcourt to Owens. Tries to cross over, is able to keep the dribble alive. Parks, baseline, hammered, no foul, and the ball goes out of bounds off of him. He made a nice move to go baseline, but they got a couple of people in there with hands up. Maybe some contact, maybe not, but the ball went out of bounds off of Parks, and the ball will go back to Marion Local. Evan Angsman will step out of the ball game. as Brayden Sullivan will come back in. So a bit of a smaller lineup for St. Mary's, Mark, with only 6'11 and 6'6 in the ballgame. <laughs> yeah. There's a, nope. Um, oh. Measure for three. Wow. Bang. Almost a turnover turns into a three-point field goal. Probably one of those shots for Kirk Guttemuller. No, no. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah. Well, the home team has scored the last seven points to cut the lead to three. Turner. Gives to Cobain Owens. Where's the top of the key? Gap back to Turner on the give and go. And a great layup by the 6'7 junior. Really good job of running that screen and roll situation. Then to catch the ball high and keep it high and finish off the glass. Knee camp to measure at the high right point in that far corner. Stops that seven point run. Eifert 
got deep underneath the bucket, threw it off the leg of Parks and out of play. Comes Angstman back in to bring that size back into the basketball game. Lots will take a seat. Eifert out for Marion Local. Luke Pullman comes back in, a six-foot senior. Tate Hess will also find a spot on the bench. Ball stays with Marion Local. 3.37 to go on the Charles River scoreboard, 18-13. Flyers lob to Pullman, lost the handle on it when he went up with the shot. That's becoming a very popular out-of-bounds play. You isolate a guy who can really jump off the floor right in front of the rim and try to surprise the defense, but he wasn't able to finish that time. Owens, the lob to Turner, back to the basket, turnaround hook shot, too strong. Parks the rebound, stripped out of his hands, but gets to Angsman. Angsman, back to, or er, Parks, excuse me, to Angsman. No, falls out of bounds, and it will stay with the Flyers. Or, er, excuse me, stay with the Riders. So Angsman will throw it in from right of the basket as Tate Hess going to sub right back in after taking a seat for just a brief moment. On the uh, the first shot of that possession, Garrett, uh, Kanapke missed a check out. Hence, Park was able to get the offensive rebound. Angsman lobs to Parks at the top of the key. Sullivan has it, picks up the dribble, and gets rid of it to Owens. Parks out the play. Angsman the handoff. Rough Riders will reset. Sullivan has it. Working on Hess. Backs back out and bounces to Jace Turner. Good defensive set and also very good patience by St. Mary's. Owens receives the pass. 6-3 Kyle Ungren now matched up with Parks. Owens leans in the lane, can't hit, and a rebound. Grabbed by Nikim. Pullman, dangerous pass. Another one. The Flyers working around the perimeter. Hess will just float it in the lane and drop it in. Tate Hess' first basket of the evening. Cuts the lead to two at 18-16. Decided not to go with the three-point field goal attempt. Instead, took the ball into the lane for the little teardrop runner. Under two minutes to go in this first half. Flyers outscoring the Rough Riders 10 to four here in this quarter. As Parks will put up a three pointer. No. And a rebound goes to Knee Camp. He'll his. sprint up the floor. <laughs> and he <laughs> traveled with it because he got it stuck on his hip yeah. as he tried to go around Parks. He was trying to catch Parks off guard, had his back to the basket, or had his back to the ball when he was running down the floor. And Knee Camp tried to just race up the floor. Now looking at the stat page, Parks has now attempted three three-point field goals on the season. Has not made one yet, but he has range out there. So as we approach 90 seconds to play in this opening half, Rough Riders looking for a bucket in the worst way. Parks, the top of the key to Anksman, tightly guarded by Brandon Ike. Gets to Parks, he'll turn a corner and stuff it home. That time he didn't lose his dribble when he rolled to the basket. His yeah. footwork when he is pressured is so good. Ungren holding it on his right hip. Gives to Kanapke. Tightly guarded by Parks. Hands off to Ike. Under a minute to go on the Charles River scoreboard. Meshers had a good first half. Gives to Ungren. Flyers patient with the basketball to Hess. 45 to go. Eink, the pass to Mesher, corner three, no. That's a push <laughs> off on Ungren. I thought he got away with it for a minute. I think, uh, you know when the home crowd doesn't argue and doesn't say, no, 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 that's not a foul. It was everybody in the gym saw, yeah. saw the left hand. Into the, get him planted into the kidney. So 30, just under 35 seconds to go. There's a good chance when that guy jumps straight up in the air and is all of a sudden is moving towards the basket. <laughs> something might have happened. Yeah, something might have happened. Good call that time by the officiating crew. Cobain Owens into this near corner, still dribbling the basketball. Gets to Parks, back to Owen, baseline. To Turner. Jumper from the free throw line, no. 
Hess, the long, the rebound in the long outlet to Kneekamp, throws it off the window. First basket for the 6'8 sophomore, under 10 seconds to go. Cobain Owens to Anxman with two, with one. Good if it goes, rimmed out on Anxman. One of the three didn't get it, and we played one half of basketball. The Charles River scoreboard says St. Mary's 20, Marion Local 17. We'll step aside and come back in third quarter action here between St. Mary's and Marion Local here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Riders lead 20 to 17 at the halftime break, and got a couple of first half stats for us here, Mark. Well, the numbers are very similar for both teams. St. Mary's, 6 of 14 from inside the arc. Mary Local is 5 of 15 from the perimeter. St. Mary's, 2 of 4. Mary Local, 2 of 8. Each team has shot two free throws. St. Mary's has made two of them. Mary Local has only made one of their two free throws. Rebounding is pretty much the same. 12 for St. Mary's, 11 for St. Mary's uh, for Mary Local. Mary Local out of their 11, four of those are offensive. Three for St. Mary's are offensive. Another big difference, though, St. Mary's has turned the ball over seven times to just four for the Mary Local Flyers. The Flyers start the half with the basketball trailing by three. It's Tate Hess. Just to ink at the high right point. And absolutely no one is in foul trouble. We had very few fouls called yes. in the opening half. Hess patiently surveying that St. Mary's defense. Gives to Kanapke to Mesher. Mesher, Euros in the lane. Throws it straight at the hoop, and I believe Kanapke tipped it up and in. He did. Got just enough of a handle on the ball to slap it up on the backboard and have it fall through. Ike playing tight defense in the backcourt as Cobain Owens crosses the timeline. Picks up the dribble, fires a pass to Turner. Sullivan goes to the window, up and under, scoop shot, no. Rebound to Hess. Don't push it up the floor as Ike stops, lays it off the window, and Marion Local has the lead. Great start coming out of the locker room for the home team. Got a basket off a rebound, and then that one right there in transition. 21-20. Parks will turn and face the basket. Give to Anksman. Anksman hit a pair of threes there in that first quarter and then went somewhat silent in the second. Parks has had it stripped to Sullivan. Back to Parks in the post. Fakes the pass. Teardrop floater, no. Kanapke the board. Pretty good defense that time by Kanapke. Took away the spin move he liked first of all, then pressured the second shot. Here's a rebound. Parks the block on the shot, but the strip from Anksman to Mesher. Hess in the high post. Kneekamp thought about the three. Instead, Mesher will hand get the basketball with 6.15. Kanapke works against Parks. Got him up in the air. Parks stripped him. Third block shot of the game for St. Mary's. Two block shots for Marion Local. Sullivan lobs to Parks with his back to the basket. Spins, hangs, hits. Really nice adjustment that time by Parks because Kanapke is starting to play that move over his right shoulder, and he was still able to get the ball up and score. Great job by the Flyers to get it in the lane. Ball's loose. And a timeout called by Kirk Guttemuller. We'll step aside as well. 5.36 to go in the third here on WOSN. Twenty two twenty one St. Mary's the lead over Marion local here on WOSN. I'm Garrett C. Wright joined alongside Mark Shine and a tight basketball game that is generally a tight basketball game when yeah. these two tango. Yeah, I thought just a moment ago you said Tate Hess patiently surveying the defense. That's what he did fifteen times this year as quarterback for Coach Goodwin. Goodwin. Hess to Kanapke, gets Parks in the air, but missed the dunk. And that's blocked out of bounds by Parks on the putback attempt by Hess, it was a great move by Kanapke to get Parks in the air and then went up to slam it home and just slapped it off the back of the rim. That was going to be one of those emphatic plays that would have brought the crowd at this gym to its feet, but instead it ends up being a, that and then a block shot. 
Great play, but Mesher can't convert on the backdoor cut. And the score remains 22-21 on a pair of misses by the Flyers that could prove pivotal. Yeah, that would be an empty possession. It could well have been a basket. It's several opportunities. Parks receives the pass, fakes the pass. Gives to Sullivan on the right wing. Lobs back to Parks. Too high, and it's stolen away by Ike. Eighth turnover for St. Mary's. Hess working on Sullivan. Turns his back to the basket. Gives to Mesher. Contested three. No. Ball's loose. Kanapke throws it back into play, but it lands in the hands of Parks. Sullivan. Lobs to Parks. Parks, hook shot, can't swirl at home. Can have you the rebound. Pass quickly up the floor. Gives to Niekamp, patiently puts it off the window. Four points on the evening for Niekamp. The, the lesson that Kanapke learned at halftime about making Parks go to his left shoulder and not his right has been very obvious here in the first four minutes of this quarter. Sullivan gets his screen from Parks to the elbow. To Turner for three. Can't hit it. Dropped about three quarters of the way down and bop back out as we're halfway through this third quarter. Charles River scoreboard says 23-22. Flyers the lead in the basketball. Mesher to Kanapke. And a foul. Committed by Cobain Owens. And that's the first foul committed by either squad here in the second half. Kanapke is going to get a break. Jack Kanapke and Brandon Eink will take a seat on the bench for Marion Local. Seems like Coach Gunnar tries to get him a break halfway through each quarter. Ungren and Pullman in the game. Mesher thought about the three coming off the screen. Instead, Hess ends up with the basketball. Back to Mesher. Contested three from the other corner. No offensive rebound and put back for Niekamp. Eighth offensive rebound in the basketball game for Marion Local, and that will result in a basket. So the lead grows to five, 25-22, as Cobain Owens drives the lane, and a charge call. And turnover number nine for the Rough Riders. You see the momentum, feel the momentum, start to swing for Marion Local for just a moment. 25-22, as Owens picks up a second foul timeout on the floor, and we've got a timeout here on WOSN. Twenty-five, twenty-two. Flyers the lead in the basketball. Three fifteen to go here in the third quarter on the Charles River scoreboard. Eight to two, third quarter for Marion Local. Hess, at the top of the key, puts it on the deck. Picks up. Hands to Pullman. In the short corner, gives to Hess. He'll sprint to that defense, bounce pass into the far corner. Nearly errant. Kneekamp gets it. Floater, altered by Parks. And the Rough Riders bring it back the other way. Good defensive possession coming out of the timeout. Parks in the short corner, working on Ungren. Muscles up a shot. Time he took the ball over his left shoulder to score. Double figure score now with 10, right? Yes, sir. Turner tightly guarding Kneecamp. Goes out of bounds off of Kneecamp, and that's a fifth turnover by the Flyers. Comes Kanapke back in the game. This time he's going to give a break to Austin Kneecamp. And I'm sure, I'm certain that you could only, there's only so many times you can watch Austin Parks get the ball in the low post against, you know, somebody coming off the bench for you that Kurt Guttemore has to say, all right, we got to we gotta match up Kanapke and Parks once more. 25-24. Riders have the ability to take the lead with this possession. Turner lobs to Parks. Parks in the lane, and he'll jam that one home. It's a high percentage shot. That it is. 26-25. Rough Riders nearly steal it away. Instead, Hess in the high post. Might have traveled with it and did. Yep. That's a little bit of a late call, but it was the right call. So after the dunk and the lead goes to St. Mary's, Rough Riders have the basketball once more as Marion Local will pick up three-quarter court. Owens gives to Anxman on the right wing. Anxman to Parks. 
holding the basketball. Turnaround jump shot, short, Kanapke the board. Got bodied up a little bit, couldn't finish. Hess. Flyers working around the perimeter to Ungren. Give it right back to Hess. Cross court pass to Eink. Hess wants more. Bullet pass to Kanapke, working against Parks in the lane. Floater, yes. Give the lead back to the Flyers on the Charles River scoreboard, 27-26, as we approach one minute to go here in this third quarter. Garrett is a old, quote, old post player. I love watching those two guys go at it in the lane. We don't see enough low post play anymore. No. Not a lot of guys can play with their back to the basket as Sullivan yeah. tries to get to the window. Foul committed by the Flyers, just their first here in the second half with under a minute to go in the third. I think that says something about both teams, how hard they and aggressively they defend, but neither team gets into foul trouble. Hess will find a spot on the bench, as will Aiden Eifert. Austin Niekamp subs back in. Switching up who guards who right here. Owens, the inbound. Gives to Angsman. One of the three, and he's fouled. That's the first foul committed by Austin Niekamp. Oh, at about five seconds of game time, Marion Locals picked up two fouls. Turner will inbound. To Angsman. He'll lob to Parks. In the post. Double teamed. Finds Owens underneath the bucket and he's up and good. There's that great vision we talked about in the first half. 35 seconds to play here in this third quarter. 28-27. Riders elite. Flyers the basketball. Nearly stole it away. It was Sullivan working against Mesher. Throws it off the window. Sullivan's first made basket of the evening. Live ball turnover turns into a run out. Ten seconds remain in this third quarter. Nearly stolen away again. Mesher with the basketball into the near corner. Three for Kneekamp. Left it short. Offensive rebound, though, for Ike. Swatted by Parks. And that'll do it for the third quarter. Riders lead 30-27. Fourth quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com and apply today. Fourth quarter about to get underway. Rough Riders with the basketball, nursing a three-point lead. Each team had ten points in the quarter, so the lead remains three for the visiting St. Mary's Rough Riders. Riders hand off to Sullivan, Braden Sullivan. Gets to Austin Parks in his short corner. Working against Kanapke, leans in, can't hit, but Parks will step to the free throw line and shoot two free throws in what has been a somewhat rare occurrence tonight. That was a really nice move for him. Kanapke's done such a good job in the third quarter taking away that move to the baseline side, so he was able to fake into the interior and come back and draw the contact. Parks a 76% free throw shooter at the line. Shows some little touch there. Got 13 points, averages 19 a night. It's only played in four of the Rough Riders' five games. Had a groin injury and missed the first weekend or so. Ball loose after the second miss, but the rebound comes out to Parks. Sullivan eyed the rim for a moment, steps inside the three-point line and gives back to Owens. Hanksman, Parks, fakes the handoff. Finds Sullivan for three, yes. Hess left the double team that time and went down to help on Parks and left his man open to the top of the circle. They rotated, but he got the shot up before they could get there. It's now a seven-point lead for the Riders, 34-27. As Kanapke holds it on the right wing. How about St. Mary's? They were on the ropes a little bit there in the quarter. Turnover. Sullivan nearly out his pocket pick from behind by Hess. And will wisely pull it back out. 34-27. Owens. To Angsman. 
two first quarter threes and quiet since. Turner to Sullivan, another three. Back to back. And just like that, the lead is 10. Well, how about the comeback that St. Mary's made in the opening part of the third quarter was all the home team, and yeah. they have rallied big time since then. On the road, too. Good job, St. Mary's. Let's see if Marion Local can rally one more time. Six and a half to go. Hess isolated. Stops. Turnaround jumper. No. Parks the board. Cobain Owens. Brings it across the timeline. Angles to his right. Asking for somebody to come help him out. Hands off to Sullivan. Working on Hess. Sullivan to the window. Fouled. And that is the fourth foul committed by the Flyers here in the second half. Just two by St. Mary's, so continues to be a relatively clean game. Angsman. Sitting an out-of-bounds play up. Let's see where this goes. Gets to Turner. He'll put it on the deck, one dribble, and gives to Sullivan. Lobs to Parks, isolated by himself, working against Kanapke. Parks, got it. Now he's got Kanapke, sure, sure which way to go. He's gone baseline on him. He's gone there, off his left shoulder in the middle of the lane. Timeout. Kirk Guttemuller wants to talk about it. We will as well. 5.41 to go in tonight's ball game. Lead out to 12 for the Riders here on WOSA. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Out of the timeout, we'll see if the Flyers can rally, trailing by 12. And they've got the basketball. Over the last eight minutes, it's been 18 to 5, St. Mary's. Mesher with a couple of big threes, works the basketball around the perimeter to Eink. Tightly guarded by Owens. Ike uh, gives it to Hess. Other than Jaden Mesher. Ball was tipped, not tipped into the backcourt, and that's a turnover by the Flyers. Other than Jaden Mesher, the Flyers don't really have a three-ball threat yet this season, so they're going to have to climb back in either from his threes or work in the interior. Owens brings it across the timeline. Offensive foul. It's the first foul committed by Austin Parks. And I'm not sure. He had his back to the basket. Um, so I'm not, I'm not certain yeah. what the justification is for the call, I guess. Yeah, I was, I was watching the ball in the play out front. I, I was watching the, the cut that was being made by Evan Axman, so I'm not sure what the call was yeah. down inside. I was gonna, he was pretty. He was out uh, past the block, extended, and had his back to the basket. And I just happened to look up and see it, and the whistle was blown. Well, Kanapke was deep and really yes, wanted the was. ball. Hess will rise and fire. Mid-range jumper, no. Parks secures the rebound. For the last eight minutes, Parks has really turned it on. He's rebounded, he's defended, he's scored, and now and what the, have we got? The scoreboard is turned off. That can be a problem. We have lost the scoreboard. I'm just looking to see if I kick that plug out of my feet. We've got one scoreboard <laughs> now. Up, 4.52 to go. We'll take the opportunity to get uh, some fluids in everybody. It's a little warm in here, if you ask yeah. our camera operator, Jacob O'Neill. Now, we do that in football, right? We, we take a hydration yes. break. When it's early, hot, in this, early in the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good idea, yeah. Sun was pretty hot in the gym here. So now we've got everything fixed. Also, we're working on somewhat of a crunch timeline of there is impending weather. Yeah, we're all going to die tomorrow anyway. I hope we get this on the air before <laughs> the weather kills us all. That's a bright, sunshiny <laughs> take there from Mark Shine. His views do not necessarily reflect those of the West Ohio Sports Network. 39-27. Ball poked out of bounds. The Flyers retain possession. But, yes, winter storm... Death Vortex, Vortex 3000, supposed to hit this evening. So we moved the start time up a little bit. I want to know what a cyclone bomb is. I, 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 I Apparently we're going to find out. I, I guess. I, I don't know what that means, but I'm not sure it sounds very good anyway. Uh, Parks in a high post, nearly double teamed, and a foul committed by Ike. 
That's the uh, proverbial hand in the cookie jar thing. Tried to reach in and slap the ball loose. Instead, got him across the wrist. One more before we shoot one of ones. First foul committed by Eink. Hanksman looks to lob it in to Parks at the top of the key. Sullivan isolated by Mesher to the window. High off the glass, couldn't get it to go. Rebound comes down to Eink. Ooh, good Had steal. a pocket pick by Owens to race to the hoop, and he wins it. That was done perfectly. Low hand, came up on the ball, rather than down across the wrist, got the steal, and then converted the layup. Very well done. Now a 14-point lead for the Flyers, or for the Rough Riders, excuse me. Trying to lob it to Kanapke, poked away by Turner. Angsman with the basketball. Gives to Owens, under four minutes to go now in this fourth quarter. Sullivan has it. Drives. We'll back it back out. With 5.36 to go in the third quarter, Mary Local had 22 points. They're on 27 right now. What a defensive run here. Parks drives baseline, tried to go up and under. Wanted the foul, didn't get it. Flyers race back the other way. Pass it to right wing. Oh, had a steal. pocket pick by Owens once more. It's a three on two. He'll now Euro in the lane, throws it high off the glass, no. Turner, the offensive rebound, put back, no. Comes back to the Flyers. Ike to Hess, Mesher, contested three, no. Kanapke grabs the board in the lane, throws it off the window, and Parks will grab it for St. Mary's. Three minutes to go on the Charles River scoreboard. And the Flyer faithful trying to will their squad to victory here. St. Mary's trying to pull away. Timeout called by Dan Hegemar. We'll take it as well. 2.47 to go. 14-point advantage for the Rough Riders here on WOSN. Under three minutes to go here in this fourth quarter. Rough Riders with a 14-point lead against Marion Local. Chase Turner has the basketball. He'll get it to Parks with his back to the basket in a short corner, working on Jack Kanabke. Parks, jump shot, kisses it off the window. Really adjusted well in the second half to get his low post scoring opportunity. He's got 17 now. Mesher between the circles, throws right to Hess, trying to get it to Kanapke. Does, got Parks up, and the foul. Been a quiet second half for Jack Kanapke. Gets the bucket, but now steps to the free throw line with his 10th point, looking for 11. But that was head and shoulder fake. Got him up in the air, went up through his arms with enough strength to score. They could use a lot more of those to get back into this one. So 43-29 on the Charles River scoreboard. Flyers can foul one more time and not put very low, uh, put the St. Mary's on the free throw line, so look for them to be very aggressive here defensively. Nothing but net on the bottom of the free throw for Kanapke. In fact, they went small trying to, to really jack it up the defensive pressure. Sullivan and got called for the five-second violation. Oh, we got, oh, okay. All right, I believe one official had a five-second violation. Another got a timeout, so... With 2.17 to go, we'll keep it here. 43-30. Yeah. Sullivan Coach <laughs> tested Hagemar the limits was, of those five seconds. You know, Coach Hagemar was right in the ear of the official Jeff Klaus and was just waiting and waiting. And when he realized what was about to happen, he called it. So he got his time out in time, but they have just one left now. And it, it's great defense yes, on, the, on the inbound there for... Marion Local just had everybody locked up. It wasn't like Sullivan missed somebody who was wide That's open. Correct. It was they, just <laughs> everybody Coach, was blanketing it. Coach Gunnamiller went with a smaller lineup and went with a lot of quickness, and they were about to get that denial, and then the, uh, the timeout occurred. So with 2.17 to go, it's 43-30 on the Charles River scoreboard. And is that smaller lineup, Mark, the, the – Best opportunity for Marion Local to claw back in here? Well, they need a lot of pressure. They need some three balls or some, some movement to the goal where they draw a foul and get the and one opportunity. So, yeah, they're probably going to go small and really try to be very aggressive defensively and then you know, take it to the rim or pull up for threes. So Sullivan has the length of the floor to go. 
width of the floor, I should say. Looking to inbound once more. Gets it to Parks. Gets rid of it immediately back to Sullivan. See if they double up. Nope. Oh, good play from Hoped behind. from behind. Did measure, but it still lands in the hands of a rough rider. Got to foul soon. Owens to Turner. Two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. There we go. And a foul committed by Aiden Eifert. The next one will be the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So the second foul by Eifert, team sixth. Now coach will put his size back in the basketball game for this offensive possession. And Marion Local has three timeouts remaining. He may well try to score after this possession and get a timeout. Get his quick people back in. Flyers, I believe, are barking out a 1-3-1 one, one zone defense here. That's what Kurt Cuttemuller was telling his squad. Yeah. As Turner gets to Angsman. Wisely Skip pulls pass. it out. Yep. Parks using, in the high post. Using Parks in the middle as the outlet man. At Turner. Sullivan will walk it back out. Just tries to split a double team. Bounces to Angsman. Turner just playing keep away. Pretty nice you got a 6'10 guys your outlet pass. Yeah. And there's a foul to put him at the free throw line. Hank's been an 82% free throw shooter. So he'll shoot the front end of a one and one here with a 13 point lead and under 90 seconds to go. St. Mary's three for four from the free throw line today. Hanks misses the front end of the one and one Flyers got to move quickly. Look for a quick score and a timeout. Hess lobs down low to knee camp. Out of play. Good help inside by Cobain Owens. Mesher immediately to Knapke. Mesher off the screen for three. Got, got it. it. Well executed out of bounds play, and there's the timeout. Flyers knew exactly what they wanted. Yes, sir. We'll keep it here. 43-33 with 105 to go. And might need a couple more, but that is the third three of the evening by Jaden Mesher. Got it. just what they wanted coming out of the out-of-bounds play. Then they got the timeout so they can go with their smaller, quicker lineup. And try to pressure again. And one would think they're going to foul rather quickly if they don't get a steal. I'm not certain <laughs> the official took the basketball out of the gym and Walked out into the cafeteria with the uh, Scott Nurse, the other official, looking at him like, what are you, what well, are you maybe doing? Maybe he went to get some popcorn or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, what are you doing? But uh, a 10 point lead for the Rough Riders. And his two buddies are giving him the business right now over doing that. So whatever <laughs> happened. <laughs> I'm not certain. But he yeah. walked past the sheriff's deputy to go out there, and the sheriff's deputy then went out like, wait a second, why did the official just take the basketball out of the gym? Uh, right in front of. Marshall Jordan, our camera guy down there. And Freddie Flyer, too. Oh, yep. Going to move the cheerleaders back because when he inbounds the basketball right here, Braden Sullivan can run the baseline. So after the made basket, Sullivan's got free range. Looking. Poked out of bounds by Eifert. But stays with St. Mary's. Now this time it'll be a spot. He cannot move this time. Sullivan looking for the baseball pass. Quarterback on a football team. Gets to Parks. Turner lobs back out to Angsman. And then a foul committed by Hess, his second. And I misspoke Sullivan running back on a football team. There's Owens to go to the free throw line, and he shoots 86%. And St. Mary's is a team 75% from the free throw line, yeah. which is not a number we really see that high in, anymore. In today's year, oh, oh, that's outstanding today. I think I, uh, this is my third game this week, and I think the highest I'd seen was 55% from the free throw line. So 75% is. They've missed their last two. Let's see if Owens can stick this one for them. Yes, sir. Coleman Owens now has seven points. Been a real spark plug here in the second half. Got a couple of steals that have led to easy buckets for St. Mary's. He and Braden Sullivan had good, a good second half. Can't get the second one to hit. Knee camp the rebound, and every minute to go on the Charles River scoreboard. Need something quick. 
Mesher coming off a screen. Gets back to Hess. You see how quickly it got out to get on Mesher. Hess jump shot. No. Kanapke tips it up and in. And a timeout call. We'll step aside as well. 44-36, lead down to eight with 37 seconds to go. Here on WOSN. Thirty-seven seconds remain. Flyers have cut the lead to eight. Forty-four, or, uh, excuse me, nine. Forty-four, thirty-five. Not the greatest sight lines to the scoreboard here at the hangar. It's about the only downside of this fantastic facility. It's the Flyers, or excuse me, Riders inbound to Parks. He'll pass out of it. Turner, under the hoop, is fouled. Turner will step to the line. This will be the last one and one as that is team foul number nine. Flyer faithful wanted a travel call there. Four of seven from the free throw line so far in the game for the team wearing blue tonight. Turner, a six foot seven junior forward, averages 12 points tonight. Both of these teams are supposed to play tomorrow, right, Garrett? I've already seen the Cardinal Stritch game for St. Mary's has been moved. Yes, so St. Mary's is going to play Spencerville on Tuesday as their yep. next game. And then Marion Local scheduled to play Anna. It's not a far drive, but we'll see how the weather rolls in. They had pushed up the start time of that game with the off chance that the weather came in tomorrow rather than tonight. We'll see how it all shakes out. But they are scheduled to play Anna yeah. tomorrow. They're a really busy ne week next week because on the 27th, they're supposed to go to Minster for their first league game. And then they're going to play in the Coldwater Tournament yeah. on the 28th and 29th. In fact, we, we talked about this a little bit, uh, Garrett, you and I earlier. They're going to play, they're talking about Mary Local. They're going to play seven games in 14 days. And then in January, they're going to play 10 games over 21 days between January 3rd and January 28th. And that's the downside of being so successful in the high school football season. I don't know if you've ever heard of the football program yeah. down here, but things, things go well for them generally into early December. So just two games under their belt, three games now as they hit Christmas. Maybe they can get the four tomorrow against Anna. But, you know, St. Mary's with five, I, I, uh, somebody I uh, – Somebody, Dayton Dunbar earlier this week, they were at, that was their 10th game of the season yeah. already. It was like, you know, we well, only play 22. You got you got till February here. Well, I think the good thing for, for Coach Guttermiller is then when you get to February, you only have five games in February, and, and you can really go into the tournament well-rested rather than try to back your schedule yeah, up you with so many games into February. Five games in 18 days at that point. And sure. Start warming Which up. Which is what the, most teams do about that time of year. Yeah. So that, that's a good thing for Yeah, them. your double weekend start to slow down there as Hess will sprint up the floor. Give to Mesher. Good job defensively. Jumped out on the three-point shot. Tried to pull it a pass to Kanapke. And the Rough Riders come out of the pile with it with 15 seconds. And it looks like Arian Local is content to just let St. Mary's dribble out the clock. It was tight a couple of different times. But St. Mary's is going to escape the hangar here with an 11-point victory, 46-35 on a hard-fought defensive battle. St. Mary's wins by 11 in a game that really kind of lived up to the, the hype of the battle of the bigs and defensive effort and all those things. I think we got what we expected here tonight. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. We, we thought it was going to be a low-scoring type basketball game. That it was in the fourth quarter, though. St. Mary's put 16 on the board to just eight for Marion Local. And uh, part of that was that in the fourth quarter, Marion Local turned it over six times in the fourth quarter to just one for St. Mary's. And that kind of allowed some run outs and some easier baskets and obviously took away some scoring opportunities for the Flyers. So it's time now to name our Stalley Hustle Award winner. And Mark, who stood out to you tonight? Well, I think tonight we're going to go with uh, number 11, Braden Sullivan for St. Mary's. He has some big points, a couple of big three-point yeah. field goals, several steals, and played exceptionally well in the second half when they stretched things out. So we're going to go with Braden Sullivan tonight. So congratulations to Braden Sullivan, our Stalley Hustle Award winner. As Mark said, a couple of big third-quarter threes to help extend that lead for the Rough Riders, and they win tonight by 11. You can check out the WOSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner.
here as St. Mary's victorious 46 to 35. Austin Parks led all scorers with 17 points tonight. Jack Kanapke puts in 13 for the Flyers. So that'll do it for us here at the Hangar for our entire WOSN crew and Mark Schott and Garrett Seawright saying so long here on WOSN.